says many skeptics misrepresent the truth. He claims there are millions of internet references accusing him of hyping up the global warming threat. But Sir John says he never wrote the quotes attributed to him. Mark Hannaby reports. Sir John Horton has spent a prestigious career investigating global warming. He co-chaired the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's for 14 years. In 2007, he received the Nobel Peace Prize as part of an IPCC delegation. Sir John's done much to warn of the threat of environmental catastrophe. But new evidence suggests fewer of us are listening. Are climate change scientists now involved in what you might call a PR war with skeptics? We are in a way, and we're losing that war because we're not good at PR. The average scientist is not a good PR person because he wants to get on with his science. A new poll for BBC News shows the number of British people who are sceptical about climate change is rising. The new populist poll of 1,001 adults found 25% didn't think global warming was happening, an increase of 10% since a similar poll in November. Recent news stories may have contributed to scepticism. Stolen emails from the University of East Anglia led to accusations, since denied, that climate change data was being manipulated. Last month, the IPCC had to admit it had been mistaken in claiming Himalayan glaciers could disappear by 2035. Sir John argues some reporting of these stories has given mistakes undue significance and deliberately misrepresented other information. For instance, the use of the word trick, which was discovered in those IEA, UEA emails, um, was, is, trick can be a good word because it's a clever thing you do when you find a trick in a, in a piece of math, as a way around a mathematical problem. Um, it's not a fraudulent word at all, but it was presented as a fraudulent word. Do you think the IPCC has been discredited by these stories? None of the IPCC's main conclusions, or even the, you know, the minor conclusions, are affected by this sort of thing at all. The conclusions absolutely stand firm because the IPCC as a whole was really trying to do the best possible job it could do. And, uh, and for all working groups, we try to work on the side of understatement rather than overstatement. If there is a PR war over climate change, then Sir John's adamant that he's been a casualty of that war. He says his reputation has been compromised and he intends to fight back. If you Google my name on the web and look for a quote, you, the quote you will find is one that go, goes like this. It says, unless we announce disasters, no one will listen. I have never said that. Um, it, the quote, uh, the origin of the quote, according to some of the people who write about it and who use it, say it's from the first edition of my Global Warming book published in 1994. It does not appear in that book in any shape or form. Sir John believes the media has an important job to do in representing the science behind climate change accurately and not giving prominence to those who don't. He believes some sceptics are influenced by concerns other than scientific truth, comparing them to now discredited lobbyists who argued smoking didn't cause cancer. A lot of it comes from the United States, from um, vested interests, coal and oil interests in the United States, which are very strong, who, and who employ hundreds of lobbyists in, in, in Washington to um, try to influence members of Congress and tell them that climate change is not happening. Sir John says the consequences of not taking sufficient action on climate change now will be increasingly felt in the next few decades. By the middle of the century, we are likely to have significant sea level rise, which for people like Bangladesh is going to be a problem because uh, 10 million people live below the one metre contour. So um, if half of them are displaced, where do they go? Um, 25 million people in southern China in the same way. Despite present difficulties, Sir John remains optimistic individuals and governments will respond to the global warming threat. The alternative vision he outlines may be one people resist imagining, but is no less horrifying for that. <laughs>